Now let's dive into N-acetyl-L-cysteine, NAC, or acetylcysteine. So as the name suggests, acetylcysteine is simply the amino acid L-cysteine with an extra acetyl group. So the acetyl group itself is actually quite small, as you can see represented here. Acetylcysteine is natural. It is found in some foods, most notably onion and garlic. Acetylcysteine is FDA approved and used in hospitals internationally, mostly for the treatment of acetaminophen or paracetamol poisoning. Generally speaking, it's more than 97% effective if administered within eight hours of the poisoning. Acetylcysteine is a direct antioxidant, but most of its benefit comes when it's incorporated into the tripeptide glutathione. Glutathione is an antioxidant, but it's also a conjugating agent, and that is the body conjugates glutathione or attaches glutathione onto toxic molecules to make them less toxic and more easily excretable. So for example, after a person's been poisoned with acetaminophen or paracetamol, acetylcysteine, which then becomes part of glutathione, is used to control some of the free radical damage, but also used to bind onto the acetaminophen molecule to make it less toxic and more easily excreted so that it's carried out of the body, where of course then it can't continue to cause damage. So that's what's meant when we talk about using acetylcysteine to produce more glutathione. Glutathione is commonly referred to as the quote-unquote master antioxidant, and it's also a conjugating agent which helps to detoxify or remove the toxic property of, and also conjugate and therefore help excrete certain poisonous substances whether it's acetaminophen or another toxic molecule. Within the first eight hours of poisoning, oral administration is equal in effectiveness to intravenous administration. After that time period of about eight to 10 hours, then intravenous treatment becomes more effective. Obviously, not all patients can handle oral administration, especially if they're already in liver failure or if they have excessive vomiting or if they have altered mental status, which increases the risk for aspiration and choking. Also, once patients enter into shock, their low blood pressure reduces gut perfusion and therefore reduces absorption of the NAC. So in all of those situations, the intravenous route is preferred. So now we're going to start introducing the idea of dosing. The typical loading dose for orally administered NAC after poisoning is 140 milligrams per kilogram, and that comes out to about 11 grams for an oral loading dose. But again, this is not for everyday use. This is for the clinical setting of acute poisoning and impending liver failure. At that point, 11 grams of NAC can be life-saving. The second major hospital use of acetylcysteine is for its mucolytic effect, and that is acetylcysteine helps to dissolve mucus so that patients can cough up that mucus and keep their airways open. And what's also been shown is that acetylcysteine in the treatment of lung diseases also improves antiviral and antibacterial immune function. So why would we use NAC or acetylcysteine instead of just using the natural form of the amino acid, L-cysteine? And the reason for this is that NAC is less toxic, it's more stable, and more soluble in water.